So today we're going to be dealing a little bit with um, just some inequalities. So I don't think it's going to be particularly difficult for you guys. Um, I'm going to call this 2.8. You guys might want to write this down because I doubt you're just going to have it all memorized. But um, maybe you all have photographic memories. I, I doubt it though. Um, but 2.8 just deals with inequality. So we have been dealing um, over the span of the last about five weeks with doing a lot of problems where we set things equal to zero, didn't we? The only difference now is we're just basically going to take a problem and make it greater than zero or less than zero or greater than or equal to zero or just plain not zero. So again, if you know where zero is, where do you think positive is? It's kind of like on one side or the other. So if you know where zero is, turning it into an inequality instead of an equality should not be that big of an issue. So I do think some of this is going to work to our benefit anyway in reviewing for the test, even though I'm choosing not to put this particular topic on the test. So notice what I did not compare that to. I have this cubic equation right here, this cubic polynomial, and I'm saying that it is greater than or equal to negative six. What did I not compare it to? I didn't compare it to zero. Well, well then guess what we're going to do? Move it over. Now, could I do that in basically every problem ever? If it's not compared to zero, can I make it compared to zero? Well, that's the first thing we always do. So we're going to start here with this little story like that. Now, for obvious reasons, this is a cubic. That's going to make life a little bit more difficult because you can't just look at a cubic and know how to factor it, right? But as a little reminder, let's talk about what some of the possible things, because on the test tomorrow, you will need to be able to list those possibilities. So what are the numbers that could be the roots of this thing, the possible rational roots? What are the numbers that go into six? One, two, three, and six. So all of the numerators are one, two, three, and six. What are the denominators? One and two. So when you look at this, I'm gonna go ahead and just say that if this was a test and you're like, oh man, I have to go in here and by hand plug these in over and over and over and over again. No. Why don't we come into here and type in the equation Now again, this is not a big deal, but when you look at this list right over here, are there that many numbers to check in my table? There really is not that many numbers to check in my table. And honestly, I just wanna find one of them that's going to be successful. So if I tried one, no, negative one, no, two, no, negative two, oh, there we go. Now, what's the benefit is if I found any one, if I had a cubic, what happens as soon as I can find one of the roots and I divide that root out? What am I down to? If I have a third degree, find one of them, I'm down to a quadratic. We know how to solve those, right? So since I know negative two, how should we divide that factor out? Which kind of division would be the smartest thing to turn that cubic down into a quadratic? Of course. So we're going to do a quick round of synthetic division. Kind of going through the play here. There we go. So just a quick reminder, if negative two is the root, what does that make as a factor? For the test tomorrow, if negative two is the root, then the factor would be x plus two. So I'm going to write that right over here. And this represents 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. So is it possible that this also factors? Now, if it doesn't factor, who cares? Can we get the answer using the quadratic formula or completing the square or something? Yes, we can do all of those things. but. Well, let's face it, I don't have so much time, so I made this a nice factorable story. So it has to be 2xx, right? How are you going to get the number 3? 
has to be a one and a three. So if I put the three here and the one here, so notice that I got a two X squared, which I want. I get the three and I got a six and a one, which would make negative seven if what? They're both negative. So that looks to me like I have turned this crazy story up here into this set right there. You guys follow me? Now keep in mind, I didn't want to know where zero happened. What the question actually asked is where is the graph above zero? You guys cool with that? So this is what makes it so simple because I know that zero happened at three. I know that zero happened at one half and I know zero happened at negative two. So far so good? Now, again, reviewing for the test. Tell me something about this polynomial. If the leading coefficient is positive, what is its end behavior? How does it have to end? It has to, have, it has to end going up to positive infinity, doesn't it? So also, Let's take a look at it. if we are graphing it, what would be the behavior around each one of these things? Would they be parabolas, lines, cubics? What would they be if I were graphing it? What do each of these look like? A line. So this would have to be a line coming down, which would make this negative, doesn't it? What does this one have to be? A line coming back up, which means it's going to be positive. And then this one is a line coming down. By the way, does it make sense that this would be negative? What does a cubic have to be? If it's up on the right, what does it have to be on the left? It has to be opposite. Does that all jive with what we did in our unit? So where are the answers? What does it ask for? Where is the graph positive? So you tell me, where would it be positive? Right in here and right out here. Those are my answers, so I'm done. X would be an element of, now again, if you don't write it that way, it's okay. You can write it in slightly less formal ways. Um, by the way, do I like the number negative two? Because it says or equal to, should I include it or not? We should. So we're gonna include everything from negative two to a half, and then we're gonna include everything from three to infinity. Was that crazy hard or is that kind of what we've been doing? I mean, it's kind of what we've been doing. We're just adding a little teeny piece to the story. So far, so good, everybody? Okay, let's go to the next one, number two. Let's go away from a polynomial and let's make this sucker rational. So g of x is this guy right here. I've got the square root of x plus five. I've got two x plus one and I've got x minus four. Again, for the sake of time, I'm trying to make this go somewhat quickly. Now, the, the textbook has a, a, a set of problems in it that I'm going to assign tomorrow after the test. Sorry to do that the day after the test, but I mean, we're just almost out of time and I got to get you to the review. Um, where they ask you the following thing. They said, A, where is it zero? B, <clears throat> where is it undefined? C, where is g of x greater than zero? And D, where is g of x less than zero? Now, I kind of like this because really, instead of asking a whole bunch of different questions over and over and over again, we'll just ask one question, analyze that one question, and then see what we can do, okay? So, let's make our little number line. We're not gonna sweat the details this time because I made it pretty easy. So what do you guys know? Tell me something. Again, I'd ignore all this crap down here. Tell me something, you know. Yeah. Can't take the square root of a negative. Okay, so where where does that sort of, where's the dividing line where I need to start worrying? Okay, so you're saying negative five, would negative five itself be okay? What would that give you if you plugged in negative five into this story? 
you'd get zero on top, right? And what is zero divided by anything? So that's okay, right? Okay, so I'm gonna put a, a closed dot, you know, basically saying that that value is zero itself. And you're saying don't go that way. Why not? Because we're gonna get the square root of a negative, which is imaginary, right? And we're not really asking for that. Um, where else is something I should make an indicator on my number line? Anything else we're not supposed to do in addition to not taking square roots of negatives? Isn't four a problem? Okay, <clears throat> where else is another problem? Negative one half right in here. Okay, now, so we've kind of figured something out because in terms of where it is undefined, I know that for any value of x below zero, equal to negative one half or equal to four, all of those values are gonna be in that undefined category, correct? So now what do we do? What's that? Oh, I messed that up, I'm sorry. You're right, thank you. I messed that up, I was, it's where that number is below zero. So it's actually, sorry, below negative five. Sorry about that. <clears throat> so how do we figure out the rest? Well, what happens guys? Pick a number above four. Five, okay. So I got the square root of 10 and I've got five would be like 11 times one. What's, what does all that generate? If I take the square root of a positive and I divide by positives, what do I have? I think that's pretty positive, isn't it? Now keep in mind that this problem isn't just saying, where is it okay? I wanna know where is it positive, where is it zero, et cetera. So what about in here? What do you think will happen in here? What do you think will happen? If that's positive, what do you guys think will happen here? It's going to be negative. You know why? Are there any squares or anything in here? So there's no bounces in this thing. What do you think is gonna happen in here if that's positive and that's negative? It's gonna be positive again. So, you know, now could you double check it by plugging in a number like two and double checking to see if that actually worked? 100% and you should on a test. So can we finish the story? Where is the graph positive? Oh, well that only happens from negative five to negative one half and then from four to infinity, right? Where is it negative? That's only from negative one half till four. And where is it equal to zero? At negative five. You got it. That's the story. What do you guys think? Does that seem like crazy harder than what we've done? Doesn't seem like it should be too much worse than what we have done in the past. So, all right. So we're going to go ahead and do um, one more little thing. Um, I'm going to kind of shorten this up just a smidge off of what I normally do because I really want to have the time to actually work on your um, review. And I think I'll probably wait to address one of the little nuances until a later date. But um, this is one of those problems that a lot of people look at and you see, oh, that X cubed and that says, oh, we're gonna do something big and fancy. Not really at all. Because if you look at the numerator, what should you do first in factoring? And again, this is one of those important things for your test tomorrow. The first step to factoring is the same every time. You don't do all the fancy stuff. There's something really fundamental that you're supposed to do first. What do these all have in common? Take the X out. So if you took the X out, this graph is no longer something that is, you're not really struggling with dealing with a cubic anymore. You're dealing with a quadratic, aren't we? Oh, that wasn't so bad. 
and it turns out something really nice happens. This turns out to be x minus 2 times x minus 2. Well, the reason I wanted to go over this problem is this little piece right here. That's why I kind of had a star in my own notes. What do you think should happen if that term is squared? What have you seen in here every time you have a squared term? Does the graph come through like a line? No, what does it do? It does one of those little, well, hold on. I saw that little, it's gonna be like a little parabola thing. It's either a little parabola going down or a parabola going up. So when we come in here and we draw our number line, <clears throat> we clearly know negative three is a bad dude. We should know that zero and two are good guys, right? But now if we just play our little connect the dots game, Give me a number above two, like six. That's positive. What is six minus two squared? Positive, thank you. Six plus three, positive. Don't hurt your brain, it's pretty easy stuff, right? It's positive. So what do you know is if this guy is positive, what's gonna happen on the other side of the number two? If that one's positive, what's this one gonna have to be? It's going to have to be positive. Why? Because that's a little bounce, isn't it? We've talked about that. This one is going to be negative. This one's going to be positive. Notice as you go down the line through this problem, everything kind of just moves around. Now, if you wanted to play guess and check, could you do it? Give me a number in here. Negative one. I like it. So if you plugged in negative one, what's this? Is that negative? What is negative one minus two squared? That's positive. What is negative one plus three? Positive. Did I actually get the negative like I thought I should? Yeah, you can always check them if you're not sure, but it should actually follow our pattern. So the question is, where is this thing greater than or equal to zero? Now there's a couple of ways that you can do this. You can either write it in the affirmative, or in the negation, and what I mean by that is where it's true would be everywhere from negative infinity to negative three. So far, so good. Where else is it positive? From zero to two, right? But wait a minute. Oh, it's just zero to infinity, right? Because it was above zero. It was zero equal to zero, it's above zero, but that's what I want. So what would have been an easier way to say this? Anybody think of a different way we could say it that would be more efficient? Instead of telling you where you can be, where do I not want to be? Don't be from negative three to zero. Now, this is the part that is a little tricky. How would I put my notation? If I'm saying I don't want to be, would I include the negative three or not? That's a little awkward. You've got to play double negative games in your brain. Because if this is says don't be closed, why? Because you're open. Don't be open because you're closed. That's a little tricky. Not everybody understands the logic behind that because there's a little bit of a game that we're playing there. But anyway, <clears throat> I, I hope what you're catching is most of this is very, very similar logically to what we did before, isn't it? Just looking at some of those things about behavior of curves. And then the last one that I wanted to hit with you guys was, was right here, where you had something like 3x cubed minus 2x squared minus x plus six and i'm going to go ahead and say that i wanted it to be I, I i think i really should go less than or equal to zero on this one so and, and i did this on purpose because I, I wanted you to see one that doesn't come out so perfect so on this particular problem when we look at it you know we, we have this thing set up already it's 3x cubed minus 2x squared right minus x and a plus six and 
when we go through this, we've got our list of possible rationals, which I think we've talked about already. You know, we could do one, two, three, and six, right? Did any of those work? We could try negative one, negative two, negative three, and negative six. None of those worked either, right? So what else could I try? One third, I could try two thirds, right? Well, guess what? I'll, I'll, I'll spare us the misery. None of them work, not one of them. So what happens if you try all of the rational ones and they fail? Well, what's left? Irrational. Well, do they exist? Sure, so what do we do? We're just like, eh, screw it. We're just gonna hit graph. I'm gonna hit zoom six. What do I wanna know? I wanna know where is this graph below the axis? <clears throat> is that gonna be hard for me to figure out? So what, what do I do to find where is it below the axis? Find the zero, which is number two. And then what was the protocol? You move the cursor where? To the left of that zero, hit enter. Then to the right of the zero, hit enter twice. So if I wanted to know where that thing happens, where is that thing below zero is everything from negative infinity until what? So now the one last thing to mention before we do that is should I close that or should I open that value? Because I want it to be less than or equal to zero. It's gonna be closed. So honestly, is that a harder problem or an easier problem when nothing works? It's honestly kind of easier. Sometimes it's a little time consuming because maybe, you know, if I had done it a little bit differently and it, it hit a couple of times, that's a little bit harder, but it's really just tedious, not hard. It's honestly mowing the lawn with the scissors is tedious. It's not hard. It's just obnoxious. So anyway, that's, that's kind of the idea of chapter two, section eight. So um, can you guys take out your reviews then? Let's, uh, let's take out your reviews that we started right before break. Um, I've got mine right here. So I don't know if it's, they should be on the far left side. Um, and it should look like this, it says unit two review. And I think I'm gonna go 